Benji, get back behind the damn fence. Who let him out? Hi, my name's Forrest Benji. Oh, hello there, young man. Forrest Benji, that's quite the interesting name. Yes, well, the Forrest comes from a Southern Cavalry officer who my grandfather served with in the Confederacy. He was a very popular man, my grandfather, though a racist too. His name, Maury, actually, which was part of my name, but my parents made me drop it because I'm a bit slow. They're very proud Southerners, my parents. Born and bred Yoknapa Toffins, all the way. And I place a lot of value in that stuff from the Old South, like your name. Well, that's alright, sir. You seem to have done very well for yourself. It's funny you say so, sir. I'm actually the owner of Banjo Rayard and Stale. Really? But an astrophysicist would love to learn how you came upon such a fortune. Well, it all started when I was a little boy with my sister Katie and I growing up in a pastoral. She was the only one who understood me, and I loved her. But she had to go up in that tree with Dalton Ames and grew up. My brother Quentin couldn't take it either. Father, father, I've committed incest! You did what? I thought I'd never see her again. Back when World War I started, I was drafted and sent over to fight in Italy. That's where I met Hank Reardon. He's an aspiring industrialist with the most annoying wife of any man you'll ever meet. So Hank, what's you gonna do after the war? Well, I'm a man of the mine, and I've always dreamt of opening my own steel mill. The old Rio Norte line does need to be replaced, and with Reared and Steel, I'll have the most success and continue the path of great industrialists in the past. Sorry, can I get in on that? Well, I'm a trader, but what can you offer me? Let's say, I'm a God-loving man who believes in self-sacrifice, a strong federal government, paper money, and emotionless sex. Any of that work for you? Well, maybe the last part, but you have nothing to offer me. You just be a moocher content to profit off my intelligence and ability. Gee whiz, talk about being selfish and arrogant. Hey, I am selfish and arrogant. That's what's so great about me. Let me know if you ever find a girlfriend. Hey, look, it's some creature. Don't worry, I have a fissy on. You know, I don't think I love Jake anymore. But I think I'm still gonna torture him by leading him on. Stop, evildoer! You'll never beat me! Beowulf! Ha! Stand up, you fell creature. Get up, I said. 
Now tell me, what does it smell like? Trees. And what do they symbolize? I can't hear you. What was that? Now run back to your hole, you coward. Don't worry, Lieutenant Jake. I got you. After Grandel hit my pear tree with that apple, I got sent to a hospital over there where I checked to see how Lieutenant Jake was doing. How's your wound doing, Lieutenant Jake? Ugh. I got hurt in the worst place ever. Phallic infantry will haunt me for the rest of my life. Should've just let me die there. Well, at least you got all them books to write and keep you busy. Yes, it is quite pleasant and masculine to be a writer, and it complements hunting and fishing nicely, which are manly pursuits worthy of that adventuresome soul stuck in this lost generation among these men and women who have lost touch with reality, only to fall prey to the hedonism and sensuousness of their times, and then I'll go to Spain, and then I'll watch a bullfight, and then I'll- You sure do talk a lot. Sounds like a good plot for a book. Almost sounds like a sun rising. Oh! Darling, I'm so glad you're awake. How much have you been drinking? Only a sip. Well, maybe ten sips. <laughs> oh, Jake, your your own sure ain't no sunrise. Uh, we could have had a damn good time together. Isn't it pretty to think so? <sighs> Use people as such a lost generation. <laughs> Let me know if your sun rises. But that wasn't the most crazy thing I saw in that hospital. Who the heck is he talking to? Alas, Father, I cannot. Words, words, words. The plague's the thing wherein I'll catch the conscience of the king. Alas, poor Yurik. I knew him well. To be or not to be, that is the question. Words, 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 words. I don't know. Horatio, my girlfriend, and that Quentin guy. I can't believe they're drowning the same sink. And that Quentin guy, he even wrote every clock in hospital too. That wasn't all though. I got a letter one day that I was going to be given the Congressional Medal of Honor for being so heroic in that day of war. And I was supposed to visit King Claudius to receive my award. Which is why the man next to me exemplifies the glory of Denmark. You should be proud. It's a pleasure to meet you, King Claudius, sir. It doth be an honor for all of us to meet you, Benji. Thank you. I was told there was to be a play for us to watch. Thou hast the fact of the matter. It be a show of treacherous tyrannicide, but it doth strike too close to the heart for I to view such a performance. Excuse me, sir? Come again? I've the intelligence of a high schooler, and I don't speak 1500s English. Boy, if I had to read a whole play written like that... Maybe thou shalt get us the poison out of thine ear. Oh, <laughs> I jest. Come now, loyal Polonius. We shall meet you in mine theater. Come with me, our noblest Benji. If thou shalt be of proper stature, I shall have you spy on my son Laertes. <laughs> Aside. If thou weren't as so dull in the head. Sir, just because you say aside doesn't mean I can't hear you. The Benji doth protest too much. If you'll excuse me, I must relocate myself to that curtain over there.
Methinks I shall spy on my lady Gertrude. There's something rotten in the state of Denmark. One of the things I've learned is that life's like a box of awkward love interests. You never know if you're going to get pride or prejudice. Yeah. Not if you're a proleptic dragon. Maybe so, but I was attending one of them rallies in Victorian England for those liberal reforms, and I was seeing this young lady standing there all by her lonesome holding up one of those protest signs. Why, ma'am, may I have the pleasure of knowing your name? Why should I agree to with it? Do you think your station makes you better than I? You presume too much to think that I did not notice your rude and brusque manner as you approached me. Ma'am, I'm not quite sure what you mean. Do you not think that I did not notice you yesterday at the ball when you did call me unagreeable? I think you've got the wrong person, ma'am. Oh, pardon me, sir. I think I have you mistaken for that Mr. Darcy, always so unagreeable and always so proud with his rational egoism. It's just that I'm afraid that I'll never find a husband in time. Why, you're such a pretty young lady. What's the matter? Just that Mr. Darcy is so very proud and condescending and told Mr. Bingley not to marry my sister. Mr. Darcy feels that my family is so unseemly that he'd rather marry Mr. Collins, that golem. <laughs> my precious. Why has he went so far as to call me plain? Well, it seems to me that you're a bit prejudiced. Maybe you should write this Darcy fellow a letter explaining yourself. It just might give him the anagnorisis he needs. You do speak truth, kind sir. I shall think on it with all urgency. One day, I was remembering Caddy, and I just decided to run. I don't know what got into me, I just felt like running, and I ran, and ran, and ran. Who are you? Away from my son, you road rat! I don't think he wants to hurt us, Papa. Are you going to try to eat us? I wasn't, but now that you mention it. But you can, Papa. We're carrying the fire. So no one can know about our motif. <laughs> Shucks, guys. I was sorry to scare you. My categorical imperative's not to eat people. That's relief. Well, I gots to keep running. See y'all. And you should have stayed in the shelter. Road rats! Stay away from my son! Help! <laughs> thought it would end like this. Wait a minute. It doesn't have to end like this. <coughs> oh my. Son, son. <laughs> We're not leaving the shelter, okay? We're gonna stay for a couple more days. Okay, Papa. Whatever you say. I love you.
Patty! Oh, Benji, it's just been so long. I'm so glad they didn't send you off to Jackson. Oh, I've missed it, Caddy. Are you home for good? I'm sorry, Benji, but it's Dalton Ames. He gave me a STD. I don't have much time. Caddy, no. It's all right, Benji. It's just that I need you to do something for me. I, you see, I have a daughter, Quentin. I need you to look out for her for me. Anything for you, Caddy. That's the last I saw of Caddy. Well, the meteor shower that wiped out a good portion of America while I was running basically wiped out all the steel companies and allowed me to monopolize the American steel industry when I stole Hank's idea and opened up Banjo Reared and Steel. And with the profits from the new steel mills invested into some company with an apple, I made my millions. I feels in good hands knowing Jason's managing the money. But I still lost my pasture. Phil, that's a beautiful story, Benji. Well, it's true. That's what literature does. It tells the story of humanity and Klaus. And that's what beauty is. Like my mama used to say. Stupid yeah, is yeah, what Benji yeah, does. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, that reminds me of some of the dreams I had recently. That's quite all right, Mr. Einstein. I've got to go back now. I'd rather eat red meat. I'd rather eat red meat.